right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, I'm gonna give everyone a few moments uh, before I jump into a quick little intro and then we'll go ahead and get started with today's uh, course. Today we have um, Rampart Partitions here with us. Carl is going to be presenting about their architectural walls and office systems. Um, so we're gonna be diving into acoustics, um, general benefits of the system, including um, employee satisfaction, productivity, um, general occupant well-being. So really excited for today's uh, topic and presentation. Uh, my name is Bo. I'm here with Ace Lab. We're helping out with presenting today's uh, information, and um, I'll be here monitoring the Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, please feel free to submit them to the Q&A box. I'll be keeping my eye on that. We usually have some time to answer questions at the end, and we'll also have a record of everybody's questions. So if we don't get to yours today, um, we'll have a record of that, and the folks at Rampart can follow up after today's event. All right, looks like we've got a good amount of folks joining. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give a quick little intro on ACE Lab and how you can request additional information after today's course and chat with the folks at Rampart directly. Um, so everyone who signed up for today's webinar automatically has a free ACE Lab account. Um, it's completely free to use. So feel free to check it out after today's event. I'll also launch a quick poll. So if you would like a, a quick demo with somebody from our team about using ACE Lab, you can indicate interest on that poll momentarily. Um, but today, I just want to show you how to request information from Rampart after today's webinar. So if you want to follow up about a project, um, get some more product literature, some more details from them, um, this is a great way to do that. So you can search for any manufacturer or product right from the homepage. Just head to this search bar at the top. Type in the name of the manufacturer or the product that you're looking for, and that'll cross search across uh, product categories, brands, and resources. Um, so we've got a lot of great content on Ace Lab for you to access. You can head right over to Rampart's page on Ace Lab, and right here is this little contact button. So you can use this to get in touch with their team directly. I'm going to go ahead and click through that. Um, you can nest it under a general research project, or you can enter project details. You can select a specific product, or you can skip, and then let them know a little bit about what you're looking to connect about. After you do that, um, you'll have a conversation automatically made for you. You can explore some more about their products from this page, save them to your projects, check out case studies and inspiration. And to get back to that conversation that you've made with uh, Rampart, you just head over to your workspace and go to conversations. So over here, we've got um, oh, the correct screen is not being shared. Thank you. Um, Carl, would you mind pausing your screen share? I think that might be what's happening. Okay, great. Let me know in the Q&A, guys, if you can see the right screen now. Hopefully that's fixed, but I'll just go back to the beginning real quick. So from our homepage, just type in the name of Rampart, head over to their brand page on Ace Lab just by clicking here. And right here is that contact button where you can get in touch. So you can go ahead and select this, nest it under a project. Um, you can select a specific product or skip that and let them know what you're looking to connect about. And then a brief overview of the other information. Here you can see their products. You can save products directly to your projects. You can check out case studies, inspiration. And to get back to that conversation, just hover over to your workspace and go to your conversations tab. So here you can see I've got a bunch of conversations. They're all nested under my projects. Um, and this is a really great way to kind of keep all your communication in one place and uh, keep your product research all in one place. So with that, um, if anybody would like to have a quick demo to learn some more about using Ace Lab or have some help with connecting to Rampart after today's webinar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and launch a quick poll. You can let us know if you're interested in that and somebody from our architectural team will reach out to you. All right. Without further ado, I'd love to hand it off to Carl. Thank you so much for joining today and for presenting today's course. Um, go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Thank you, Bob. I will share my screen. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Bob. So I will be giving you a quick presentation on Rampart Partitions and our acoustics system, diving more into detail about Acoustics 101, as they relate to glass wall. So kind of a, oh, a quick overview of what this presentation is going to include is a little bit about me and who we are as Rampart Partition products, um, what are actual walls if you're not that familiar with them, the client way to use them, Acoustics 101 over how uh, different types of glass and combinations of glass and walls 
can impact those acoustics in your office settings and design with you, right? So kind of touching on the tools and the options that are available for you at the front line. And then uh, at the end, we'll have some kind of questions. So who am I? So I'm the vice president at Rampart Partitions. Uh, uh, Rampart Partitions itself is a family business, so I'm third generation uh, running the front office and sales and marketing uh, alongside my brother Steve, who runs the back office and production side of things. Uh, so I have a long uh, history of architectural walls uh, and design development here by training. And so we're really into the thick of the product side as well. Uh, so we spent a long time designing all of our products in house. Uh, marketing deals, we do operations in a lot of the markets. So it gives us a hands on understanding how the products get used, how to ensure that they are. Designs are meeting everyone's expectations to it and making sure that we uh, design with the users in mind. So, who is Rampart? So, Rampart is, a, like I mentioned before, a family owned business. Uh, we've been around just over 50 years now and uh, we've evolved over the number of years. So, beginning was accordion doors and uh, curtain wall for product, and we uh, ventured into partitions, cubicles acoustic panel, and we've seen the evolution of the office space change uh, over the years, and we've always adapted to that too. And so in the early 2000s, we started getting into the dynamical partition space and architectural walls. And so that's where we spent uh, a number of years now, a couple of decades, fine-tuning our products to meet those changing needs of the office environment. And that's where we put a lot of our focus. Um, and so we've really doubled down onto that product line, and that's where we uh, dived into our Moodle products. And that's the core focus of what Rampart is today, is the Moodle architecture wall. Real quick, Carl, um, I'm hearing from some folks that your audio is a bit broken up. Um, is there, are you using audio? I can try to speak louder. That's, I'm not All sure. Right. Is it better now, Bo? Is that any better? <laughs> That sounds better to me. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe okay. go ahead and, and let us know if, uh, yeah. Okay, if there is any issues, just yeah, do let me know and I will try to adjust. Awesome. So um, what are architectural walls? So um, architectural walls really are glass wall systems that are designed with the fixed panels, doors, and hardware, all included in what is designed. The original idea behind the mountable wall was that they would be installed kind of like furniture and could be demounted and reinstalled elsewhere. Uh, that was the original idea behind them that still exists today. But the main concept now is moved to the You've now kind of cut out completely. Oh. Am I still there? I can hear you, but it's, um, yeah, it is starting to cut out a little bit here and there. Really? Okay. Um, am I clearer right now, or is it the video or audio that's being a problem? It's the audio. Right now, you are clear, though. Right now. Okay, so I'm not sure what's going on with that audio. Uh, so it's a setting that I can adjust. So let me just see if I speak right into a mic. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm not sure what the the exact audio issue is. Is it still clear on your right side? Now, right now, it's still clear on my side. Um, okay. So I will try to keep this same posture and level. Of speaking. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to try to put on the closed captions so that we have those as well. Okay. My apologies if the audio is cutting out and not clear. Um, but yes. I'm Recap the last 30 seconds. Or so the architectural walls really are made to be semi permanent now, uh, where the idea is more so about being able to achieve a system that's going to come complete to ensure that the doors and hardware uh, and options that are selected are all compatible with one another. And there's not a misstep to specify the exact type of products or details that need to be fitted for your use case. Uh, and that's really what we fine tune within our systems as well. The idea ensuring that we have a wide selection, yet we know that the products are compatible in your design. 
Uh, big elements for what we do and what we focus on is on natural light, right? So as design has changed and big fabric cubicles have come down uh, and with the open concept offices, we've seen those kind of private offices on the outside of the floor plate in the design. Uh, and that's been blocking some of the natural light that's getting into the interior spaces. Uh, but with the rise of the glass walls and the architectural mountable partitions, we've seen that now we have the ability to have natural light still flow into the space. And that has a bunch of different benefits, right? From increasing the mood, the changing people's uh, perceptions of the workspace, improving sleep quality, just getting more natural light to them. And so there's a bunch of studies and research that's gone into making sure that improving natural light and having kind of a biophilic design elements into your designs really improves well-being in the workspace. And so we've incorporated that into our designs, ensuring we maximize the amount of natural light that we can have passing through the spaces, which is why we maximize the amount of glass in our use. Also with the architectural walls, there's a lot of custom aesthetics that can be offered in there. So there's a bunch of different possibilities of finishes or styles uh, to give a bit of a flair or that could be, as you see in the picture here, it could be related to a custom film color on glass, colored glass. It could be a custom finish on the uh, framing as well. So a standard would be a clear anodized finish or black painted finish. But if you needed to have a custom round color, custom anodized color, those are all possible as well. Now, part of the customization. A lot of the use cases that we see now with the architectural going to be collaboration space, right? So now there's a lot of open offices, but we're seeing a lot of meeting rooms, huddle for two people, four people, eight people, uh, ability to have small spaces where you can still have an intimate or uh, private conversation and collaborate with your colleagues in those spaces. That's been a huge increase for those workspaces. And so it still allows for people to have an open cost of office, but the ability to move into a space where they can have that privacy when they need. A lot of what we offer, off, offer as well is going to be some versatility and adaptability, right? So we do have the ability to reconfigure spaces as needed. You can change the types of walls that you have in the system, they are still always demountable, they have minimal impact on the base building. And so that's part of that versatility and adaptability of what the systems are inherent to build. Here's a, a quick overview of what that means, the different systems that are offered and how they get used. So within the boot wall family of architectural walls, there are four systems. There's a P1 and they're color coded on the screen in front of you give you a better idea, P3, P4, and P5, plus all the different doors. And each system is intercompatible, so you can mix and match systems to meet your design need uh, and achieve the acoustic requirements that you might need. That's one of the big advantages of the systems. And I'll get into a little bit more detail of what the differences are between each individual system. So you can use it for private spaces as well. So like I mentioned before, those huddle rooms, you know, picture here, are small like kind of uh, phone booth style rooms. Uh, a lot of the ideal type of customers and clients are going to be for law firms where they have a lot of private offices, apartments around the perimeter, uh, open spaces in the workplace. Another use case for private offices here. Conference room, which is a big one. Uh, this is typically where we see that double glass for higher acoustic performance. And we'll get into more details of that a little later on as well over the uh, glass and SPC down. Uh, institutional applications as well. Here too, we often see uh, high SPC requirements and the uh, needs that we'll have to just for our door types, hardware, and the glass configurations. Uh, we also seen in the last few years too, since COVID, a lot of kind of home office setups, 
people needing more private spaces in their office and their homes. Uh, a little bit about kind of how the systems uh, incorporate some reusability or recyclability to them as well. So a lot of talk about kind of lead and lead point. Uh, not on our systems, most of it is not from recycled content. Uh, meaning that's due to kind of glass and aluminum, which is the major uh, composition of our systems. And the glass is not going to come from recycled content because it needs to be uh, newly made glass, float glass. However, it can be recycled. Similarly, with the aluminum, uh, most of the time we're using, or let's say 60% of the time, it's clear anodized finishing. And to get a clear anodized finish, you don't need to use a recycled aluminum because you'll see more defects and uh, imperfections inside that aluminum. However, we do offer a powder coated paint finish. And with that option, there is the ability to use recycled aluminum. So that can be uh, built into our product as well. 100% of our systems can be reused. So their life cycle uh, can be way further extended out beyond the typical uh, use case of six, seven to ten years, which is most kind of office space and whatnot. Uh, but those can be really reused and we've seen it with a lot of clients too that will be able to recycle and reuse those systems uh, in new configurations uh, in a long-term setting. All right, so now we'll get into the, the crux of kind of soundproofing and acoustics uh, one -on -one. So all the systems that we offer here are acoustically tested. Uh, it is one of the, the uh, pivotal factors in the mineral partition of the actual wall is that they offer an acoustic benefit in their design. And so you might be asking, what is SDC or what are, how does the acoustics actually affect this as well? And so it's the SDC, for those that might not be familiar with it, but is the sound transmission class. And so in simple terms, it's the amount of decibels that are kind of blocked by that barrier, right? So in our case, it's the glass wall system. And so depending on the configuration of the walls and the glass that's used, it will have a different value uh, in terms of how much sound is blocked. It. It's a little bit more technical for uh, in the reality though for basics, it's really that simple. So if you have a small gap at a door, let's say a door frame, which is common, the bottom of the door, well, maybe only a little bit of air gets through. However, you, you'll notice a lot more sound getting through as well. And so small gaps or leaks at the edges of the wall systems or the doors, which is the most common, uh, can lead to a kind of a large decrease in the STC value performance of that system. So these are critical items to consider in the design too. And so this gives you a simple overview of kind of the difference between, say, a small gap and a large gap. Well, with the air, it might not seem as drastic or small gaps it might only mean small air passes through over the stem throughout the lot, and you'll notice that a lot. So that's why, again, it's the importance of sealing all the leaks and trying to provide that acoustic feel wherever possible. And there's a lot of factors that play into it. Again, for the doors, and that's where the focus comes into because it's a fixed glass fix and it's relatively easy to ensure that those are properly sealed. At the door locations, that's where you want to make sure there's always like a drop seal on the swing doors, uh, that there's gas getting around the perimeter of the doors as well. So they seal, uh, when they close, they are properly sealed against the frame and any of the uh, gaps that might be present are sealed off. Some of the factors that could play into that is really going to be kind of floor level, floor finishes that could prevent or uh, minimize the feel you have on the floor. So for acoustic performance, so it differs a little bit than what you may think of for drywall, uh, because you can get high values of drywall that using acoustic drywall solutions by putting different acoustic barriers inside of their different station. Uh, and so you can just add more mass essential, which is going to improve the acoustic performance. 
when it comes to glass, we want to minimize kind of what the material is on the thing. We want to have the transparent glass flow through. And so the acoustic performance is going to vary typically in commercial spaces for using three eighths uh, up to half inch glass in most applications. And then it will go with either single or double glass. And those ranges could be anywhere from an STC of 31 up to an STC of 52. So this, I'll quickly go through the next two slides, but it gives you just on the uh, screen kind of an idea of what STC values to expect in the systems depending on the glass type. So for single tempered, it ranged at the thickness from an STC 31 to an STC 36. For laminated glass, this is when there's two layers of glass that are glued together with an uh, interlayer, and those values are slightly higher because of that composition of the glass, and those will a range from an STC 35 to an STC of 38. If you want to go higher than that, typically we're going to double glass. There are specialty glass that might be able to provide a higher STC value on a single layer. However, typically in our configuration, to get above an STC 38, we'll be looking towards a double glass configuration. And so with double glass, we can get up to a 46 using again half inch tempered, half inch laminated, and there's ways to get a little bit higher than that. Still. So with double laminated, it actually does not achieve a higher value than the uh, one laminate, one tempered layer of glass. And this is where we've done all the testing within the system to see what achieves the best result, right? So varying the type of glass in double glass uh, composition has the best impact because it it absorbs different frequencies of sound, and that will improve the acoustic performance of that glass. So oftentimes when we see specifications written, it'll have a STC value uh, to achieve, but sometimes it also calls out for the glass composition to achieve. And they may not always align, because again, with our systems, well, we test the system, not necessarily that glass for that glass composition. So we'll make sure that we respect the glass STC value, and that might mean that the STC composition of the glass to use may differ than what's specified. So this here gives you a, a quick overview of what is achievable within the different systems, right? So the P1 and P3 systems are all single glass, so they can achieve up to an STC 38. The P4 is a double glass system, which can achieve up to an STC 52. And then the P5 system is a different style of system, which is going to have glass tiles and solid panels. And because of that, it's a little bit lower than STC value. You can't get all the same glass composition. So there are almost endless possibilities with, in terms of STC values. So we can really find things where we achieve the exact composition value that you require for your projects. Keep in mind that the STC difference of one or two is really not going to be perceivable to the human ear. Uh, when you get to an SSD of three or, or more, that's where you can start taking a difference of it too. That's just always something to keep in mind as well. So this here, I'll give you a quick overview of the, the differences between the, the different systems here too. So on the left-hand side, the Moodwall P1 system. Uh, so this is a low profile minimal system. So it's got a one inch high profile. Uh, the trade-off essentially just that there's minimal adjustment. So it just means that on some floors that are very out of level, it may not be the best suited option, uh, but it works perfectly fine on raised access floors or on areas that are, uh, have a finished leveling concrete applied to it as well. Uh, next to it, we have our Moodwall P3 system. So this is a two and three eighths high system that has a lot more adjustment. So in terms of adjustability with the two, which is critical to the glass the metal wall systems, we're looking at a plus or minus uh, three quarters of an inch. So about a one and a half inches total adjustability in there, which is typically more than enough for most uh, typical floors and their deviations. Next up, we have our P4 system. So there's two variations. You can go with a single glass or a double glass version of the P4, uh, just to keep the same look. So if you have a uh, large floor plan and then you have conference rooms and uh, private offices, we may want to have double glass on the 
conference rooms, however, may not be required on all the offices, but you can keep the same design look for those. Uh, and they also have the ability, if you wanted to add a second glass to those, to retrofit them afterwards without having to replace the whole system. So in terms of types of walls here too, so that's why I mentioned it, showed you the P1, P3, P4 systems, which are really the frameless glass full height systems, either single or double. And so those systems will vary depending on the design requirements. You want something low profile, you want something that can bulky, or you have high consistency requirements. So in terms of the glass that we use on our systems, that will vary in SDC requirements, uh, or if you have a special request. So we use tempered glass, laminate glass, we use tempered laminate as well on special occasions or on requirements for it and for the settings. You can get frosted glass or colored glass as well. So all these are options that are all compatible. With it. So some quick examples here as well on the system uh, has the option. Project pictures of what a P1 system looks like. This is a project with our P3 system to New York. Quick overview of what that looks like as well. It's very similar to the P1. It's really just that bottom tr uh, track that was different. So it's slightly larger, offers that adjustability to it. This here is a project in Toronto with our P4 system. This is all double glass with a colored film inside of double glass that would be a tamper resistant to the student occupying. We're able to customize the different colors here. In this uh, case, again, the colors that were selected were green, red, orange, uh, and they were really that customized to match the pink uh, colors that were selected as well. As close as possible, they could be filmed, projected. Uh, to note on this as well, you can see we can in integrate card readers, automatic door operators, uh, and especially hardware as well. Systems and doors are compatible. Ninety-nine percent of all the different hardware is out there, and so we have our own hardware that we use, our own uh, in-house hardware that is again uh, commercial grade and applicable for most use cases. If there is a special request if the building has a specific requirement for a certain type, we can validate the compatibility, and then we have to go buy it or have it prepped for it. Uh, the P5 system is the one that's a little bit different from those other systems that we offer. This is a stick built a system with a steel frame, and then it has tiles that are kind of a fascia that can be uh, stuck onto the front of it, too. That's the demise of what you can see in this picture. Same as on the right side of this picture as well. Usually, this is the use case is for demise. Uh, so, you'll be able to run electrical through there as well, if need be, and you can customize those panels to get melanin finish. Can happen so that uh, have a wood grain to it or a solid panel. And when it electrical needs or switches to point into those walls. Here's another project, just a quick glimpse of different options. This is one that was done in white. Give you an idea of what that system looks like. Uh, this is with a P5 uh, front on it as well. So you can see you can go with the segmented panels as well. Uh, so you have solid panels at the bottom and the windows, uh, mid range. This can uh, be reconfigured in any way, right? So if you want full height glass, it can also be done. If you want just the clear story above it, that can be configured as well. So that's where there's endless possibilities. Hardware close ups as well. well. Like I said, we offer a variety of different hinges, uh, hydraulic hinges, which have a built in soft close function to them as well. Uh, cylindrical locks, that's mortise locks as well. It's class one. 
application pull handles as well. Uh, we offer locking and unlocking pull handles that are interchangeable. You might have the same exact look between those, except if you need some with a lock on it, drive that, we swap them to, to interchange them afterwards without having to place the door. This is a quick glimpse of what those solid panel finishes might look like as well on here. And there's a lot more options. These are the most common uh, selections that we would see. Within the systems as well, you can integrate other items. So it's a whiteboard, a magnetic whiteboard as well, acoustic panels integrated in there. So these are all kind of other customizations that can integrate into the system through content needs. Gets into like the door types. This is where the possibilities really explode too. So we offer a wide range of door options to meet most needs. So there's going to be frameless mount doors, low profile framed aluminum doors, and acoustic uh, aluminum doors, and more larger profiles for institutional application. We also offer solid core wood doors, and then all the doors in either frameless glass, aluminum, and wood. Uh, it can be a swing or a slide door version. So that way, in the projects, if you have a combination of both, you can use the same door and have it as a sliding function or a swing or a swing. Here are some quick overviews of the different hinges uh, options that are available as well. So as I mentioned, you know, we offer a hydraulic hinge on all of our doors as well, so you don't have to have an overhead or a concealed door closer. It's built into the hinge itself. This is a nice feature as well. I'll put the soft close to ensure that the door closes. It's fully sealed against that frame. Some of the quick overview of what the hardware that we offer looks like as well. And in terms of the tools that we offer. Um, so everything that we do is going to always be drawn in a full 3D model. So we do everything in-house within Revit. We also have the standards that are available for down uh, that you can use those standards in your designs. Uh, we also have service in-house as well to create that design and integrate our systems with your product uh, for you as well. So it's not an issue. And we have a plugin as well, which you'd like to uh, that is available. You can really customize all the options with just a few clicks within the systems as well. So it really tries to facilitate it. What this does on our side of it is reduces greatly the uh, lead time. So from when you have a request or design to when it actually needs to get uh, measured and built out. Program in place really reduces our lead time down to weeks, usually a couple of weeks. So if it's just for framing, you have our system stock that will be able to ship out within two weeks on average. And then with glass, usually we're about four weeks as well. So that makes us very, very quick on turning around. Typically, our systems are installed at the very end of a project, which means that we're trying to meet that deadline, uh, or the contractor is trying to meet their deadline. And we want to make sure that we can start having that time. There'll be any delays or something pushed through. So we can recoup some of that time by making sure that our products are on site very If there are any questions, um, this is the time we can ask questions. If there's things that are out there too, you can always feel free to reach out to us, um, you know, email address or through ACE Labs as well as so always best uh, to make sure that there's something uh, you guys have questions for, here to answer. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carl. Um, yeah, reminder, you can use the Q&A chat to submit questions. Um, you can also raise your hand. If you raise your hand, I'll unmute you. You don't have to turn your audio on, but if you have a longer winded question, that can be a, a, a great way to ask it. So if anybody's feeling brave, feel free to do that. Um, all right, let's start off with one here. Are mood wall doors available in both hinges and pinned swing hardware? So on our systems, we use hinges. Uh, we don't have a pivot on them because we found that pivots, again, don't opt for the best seal when they close. There's usually going to be a gap. Mm -hmm. So typically for these, they're going to be hinges. Hinges. OK, awesome. All right. Looks like that might have been our only one. So I'm going to put in another call for questions if you have them. Um, 
and also feel free to uh, submit an answer on that poll, as well as we have a post-event survey. So if anybody hops out, um, please leave us some feedback on that survey. That would be really helpful for us to uh, keep bringing you content that's relevant. And you can also leave any questions that you might have there as well. Um, all right, had another one come in. Are mood wall doors available in both hinges? And Oh, we did this one already. I guess it popped back up. All right, cool. So if anybody else has a question, feel free to let us know um, while we are waiting to see if anybody else has one. I'm gonna go ahead and give another refresher for how to find Rampart on Ace Lab in case any folks missed that at the beginning. So one moment here and I'll share my screen. All right, awesome. So um, from our homepage, we actually have Rampart's products featured on the homepage today. So you can jump to their product page right from here. You can click on any of these product cards. We kind of rotate them in and out to be able to show different products. Um, so that's one way that you can easily do that today. Another way is to use this search bar at the top. So our search bar uh, searches across product categories, brands, and resources, um, such as recordings of our webinars, articles, other guides that we put up. So you can use the search bar to search for anything. Um, you can filter on a specific uh, you know, type of search, um, or you can just keep going, type in the full name, Oops. brands, there we go. Um, so then you can just head over to Rampart's page on Ace Lab. This contact button is where you can get in touch with their team directly. Um, so you can use this and it'll ask you to nest it under a project. Everybody automatically gets a general research project. So that's a great way to just, you know, do some general inquiries. But if you have a specific project, it can be super helpful to add your project details. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use a project that is like a test project I've set up so that you can see the benefit of using Ace Lab to communicate about product research um, and project details. You can select a product um, that'll let the, the reps know exactly what you're inquiring about, and you can add a few, uh, you know, information types that you might be looking for. Once you click connect, that'll create a conversation, um, and you can head over to your conversation tab on Ace Lab right over here. So if you hover over workspace, you can see your projects, your conversations, and any products that you've saved. So heading over to my conversations tab, um, you can see I've got a bunch of these here. I'm going to jump into one where I know I've set up some project details so that you can see how that looks. Oh, it's under pending. Let's see. I think maybe Swan Drive might have some. Yeah. So here we go. Um, here you can see we've got a handy overview of my project details here. So using Ace Lab to communicate about product research is great because you just have your project details saved. You only have to enter them once and you can communicate with multiple manufacturers. You don't have to kind of repeat yourself over and over or, you know, copy and paste your project details. It'll just be saved automatically there. So everybody gets a brief overview and knows what you're talking about. Um, all right. And then here's your project portal while we're here, just to kind of show you, you can have all of your, organ your research organized by project. And here is where you can save all of your products. So saving products is also a great way to use Ace Lab to explore and compare products. I'll open up one of these really quick. Um, but essentially saving a product automatically puts it into this handy comparison table. You can download BIM, CAD, and spec files. Um, and you can see an overview of product details to be able to compare them easily to each other. So uh, those are some of the benefits of using Ace Lab. Um, I know we launched a poll at the beginning. I'll go ahead and throw my colleagues' uh, meeting link into the chat so that if anybody just wants to set up a quick demo, you can do that as well. Um, and it looks like there were some other questions that came in. Carl, are you answering them uh, over text? I answered them. Yeah, 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 I sent some answers in already. Uh, but yes, the uh, lead times, again, I know it's a, a really uh, big topic often, but yes, our lead time is going to be two weeks uh, for all the framing on our systems, and uh, that's two weeks for production to be able to ship them out, and then typically we're looking at about four weeks for glass and aluminum doors. Uh, wood doors are typically longer, but that's industry-wide that there's only a few manufacturers for wood doors, but that's what we're looking for. Uh, the other question from Jeffrey uh, for the frosting, I did answer there, but uh, yes, uh, typically for the frosting or the film that it is done after installation to ensure alignment of any of the joints uh, within the film, so between the panel. Uh, we will do it in-house if it's 100% coverage on the glass. Otherwise, it's usually done uh, in the field after installation. So, all right, great. Let's see. I'm going to throw in this meeting link in the chat here. Um, so just sent that over. That's for Helen. She's our director of architectural research, um, and she can help you out with uh, 
using Ace Lab for your product research. She can help you out with getting in touch with Rampart after today's webinar, if that's something you're interested in. Um, so if you have any questions after today's webinar, meeting with Helen is a great place to, uh, to get those questions answered. All right, let me see if I have anyone with a raised hand. It looks like we do have Randy with a raised hand. So Randy, I'm going to allow you to talk. If you have a question, feel free to uh, go ahead and jump in. Let's see. Sometimes people just hit the hand raise button, but sometimes people want to chat. Randy, do you have a question for us that you wanted to ask out loud? Maybe not. Okay, I'm going to mute you again, but if you did have a question, feel free to just raise your hand again or uh, let us know in the Q&A. All right, cool. Well, I'll put in one more call for questions. We can hang on for another minute or so. Um, and if there are no more questions, then we can let everybody go a little bit early. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, discuss or just bring up before um, the end of today's webinar, Carl? Uh, on my side of it, it, it is, again, we are experts in this field. If you guys have questions, uh, in terms of design, what's possible, feel free to reach out. And that is what we're here to help you with. Uh, if it's a simple question about hardware items or door types or acoustics, uh, our team is there to support you on those type of questions. So feel free to reach out to Ace Labs, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, we try to be extremely responsive to that. And uh, you'll have my contact details and you can always get in touch. See, there's one question about CEU credits. So while I'm while I'm typing out the answer to that, today was not a CEU approved course. Um, so there will be no credits for today's uh, attendance, but we do have some other CEU approved courses coming up over the next month. So stay tuned for those. All right, awesome. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, um, then we can go ahead and let everyone go a bit early but wanted to thank everybody who participated today so much for coming out. Um, thank you so much for bearing with us while we worked through some uh, technical difficulties there at the beginning. Um, really appreciate everybody's patience and participation in today's webinar. And thank you, Carl, so much for today's uh, information. It was really great to learn more about your products. Um, and I'm sure that folks are gonna really appreciate connecting with you after today's webinar. I appreciate it very much, Bob. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that attended. Great, right. thanks everyone. Have a good one, bye.